Hello folks, in this video I want to explain an idea that I've been testing on the S&P 500. What I wanted to look at is whether a down day, i.e. a day where the price closed lower than it opened, was more likely to be followed by an up day afterwards, a day where price closed higher. So basically if the win rate was going to increase if you simply wait for a down day first of all. So this is kind of a mean reversion strategy and I just wanted to see what the results of it were against uh, a buy and hold S&P as a benchmark. So I'll go through this notebook and just quickly explain what each of the cells is doing. Now, first of all, I'm importing the modules that I need. So again, I'm relying on pandas uh, and a little bit of NumPy. I then define my start and end dates. So I'm using uh, about 20 years worth of data here. So it's quite a big data sample. And then I define my start balance and the number of down days. So I did do a separate test uh, with varying numbers of down days consecutively. But for this one, I'm just going to focus on having one down day uh, to see the result of it following after. Then I download the data from Yahoo. So for this to start with, I'm just getting the S&P 500 data. So I can see that it's given me the high, low, open, close, volume and adjusted close. Uh, but for this strategy, I don't actually need the majority of them. So I will drop them out. out. And what I'm left with is the open and the close. So now I just want to output that onto the screen and just make sure that the chart is what it should be looking like. And I recognize that as the S&P 500 chart. So I can see that the data is downloaded correctly. Next, I start calculating some of the information from this chart. So I need a couple of different things. I want to know the open to close and I want to know the close to close. Now these are going to be different because of overnight gaps. So this calculates my uh, open to close by dividing today's close by today's open, but also calculates the close to close change by dividing today's close by yesterday's close. So with that done, I can then calculate the benchmark balance by using that starting balance of 10,000 and then multiplying it out by every day's close to close change. Following that, I can calculate the peak balance and by taking away the current balance from the peak, I can calculate the drawdown, which gives me the maximum drawdown for this system. The system being a buy and hold on the S&P 500. So essentially, the S&P 500 dropped at most uh, just over 56% is worst. But now I can start looking at some of the information for the strategy. So first of all, how do I define a down day? Well, a down day I've defined as essentially when the price closes below its open. So that's why I calculated this OC initially, my close or rather my open to close change. So if that's less than one, then that means that the close is less than the open. Therefore, the price has moved down. Now the next bit here was a little bit trickier. This calculates the consecutive number of down days in a row. Uh, I've put a link to where I got this information from. I, uh, I just took it from Stack Overflow. I uh, wasn't able to work this one out myself. So if you want to look into it, uh, that's how you work out consecutive values in a row. So this gives me a couple of extra columns. I've got my down Boolean value here. So this series basically just tells me whether the close was above or below the open. So for example, I've got true values here and you can do a quick check here to see 3727. Indeed, that's less than the open and same goes here. So this is coming out correct and the consecutive counter is also coming out correctly. So this is my first down day, that's my second down day and then it resets back to zero. Well, now I can identify all of my entry triggers. So I know how many consecutive ones I have and I'm only looking for one consecutive down day. So as long as that value is equal to this down day variable, which is set to one at the moment, that's going to give me a whole bunch of long signals. Now I can start looking at the system return and the system balance. So the system return is going to use NumPy and it's going to look at the previous day and check the long column to see if there was a trade signal. So if that value was true, then that means that the conditions yesterday were met. So if that's the case, then I want to know what the change was in the close price from yesterday to today. Essentially, I want to know what the return was. If that condition was not true, then the return stays at one because the price hasn't gone up and the price hasn't gone down, or rather the system balance or the system return hasn't gone up or gone down because we weren't in the market at that time. The conditions weren't met for it. And with that calculated, I can then work out the system balance pretty much in the same way as I worked out the benchmark balance by taking my start and then multiplying it out by the cumulative return of that system. 
So now I can actually do a little comparison and I can see my benchmark balance. Uh, this is the tail. So this is the very last five values of my data frame. My benchmark balance is uh, just over 25,000 from that starting value of 10,000, but the system balance is just over 80,000. So a significant difference between the two, but it's important to see them graphed uh, just to be able to visualize the ups and downs. So here I'm plotting both of them over each other. So the blue line here is the S&P 500 from 2000 up to the end of 2020. And this is just showing essentially the same price as or the same chart as what I had up here. It's just a little bit compacted. Uh, the red line is the strategy. So this is just following the rules that I've defined above and it's showing a considerably higher return and a considerably higher ending balance. Of course, I want to do the same thing as I did for the benchmark and I want to work out what the downside is. So I work out the drawdown in the exact same way and this is showing me a drawdown of about 27%. So again, that seems to be an improvement over the buy and hold benchmark. Now, to be able to visualize everything in one place, I've got this little metric section that I've copied over from my other back tests. And this just allowed me to do a quick uh, comparison at a glance. Now, I've got the total returns. Uh, you can see a significant difference. So annualized, the CAGR is giving me a difference of about 5%. So the annual return of the system is double, essentially, what the return is from a buy and hold. And at the same time, the drawdown is also reduced. Uh, but what's also quite beneficial or quite interesting is the time on market is just under half of the time. So that leaves potential to pair this with another trading strategy that would allow you to increase this and make sure that the, the cash is not sitting in the account being unutilized. And lastly, I look at the win rate for this trading system. So it's just about 57-ish percent. So that was fine for the S&P 500, but I wanted to test it on a few other symbols. So I've loaded in a list here. Now it is kind of USA focused here. Uh, mostly it's American indices. Yahoo doesn't let me download uh, FTSE data. I would have liked to include that as well. Uh, but still this gives me five different indices to compare against. I then put all of the code from above into this one function. So this backtest function is nothing new. It's everything from above just compacted into the same place. This means that I can just feed in a symbol one at a time and do the testing for them all in one go. And that's what's happening here. So I'll run this in the background uh, because this will take a few seconds. It needs to go through each of the symbols within that symbols list, download all the data, run the backtest, and then it returns a couple of values back for me. So it returns the benchmark annual return and the system annual return. I already know that information for the S&P 500, but I can now plot all of that together with the other indices just to see how they perform as well. Uh, so you can see here, I've got my benchmark in blue and the system return in red. The Y axis is the annualized return and the X axis is the different symbols. So this does seem to hold true for, uh, again, like I said, this is across mostly the US indices. Uh, but it does seem to hold true across different ones. Now, of course, there are some limitations to this back test, or rather quite a few limitations. I haven't included fees. Um, there will be an element of slippage. Uh, but more importantly, the system signals are generated at the close. And of course, the entries are also generated at the close. So in reality, that's not going to be quite the case. Uh, so this is something that would need a bit more study. But at initial glance, it seems like something that uh, could provide excess returns to a uh, buy and hold strategy while at the same time slightly smoothing out the equity curve and removing some of those steeper drawdowns. Now this has been tested with only one consecutive day. Uh, I did also do a comparison with multiple consecutive days, which I can bring over uh, to show the results from. So this chart here shows multiple consecutive days on the x-axis and then the win rate or the likelihood of the next day being an update on the y-axis. The orange line is the benchmark, so that's just the S&P, and this is just looking at, in general, if you take every single day of the S&P, look at the open to close change, how often is it an up day versus a down day? The blue line is the system. So this is what I've already tested, and I'm getting returns of, uh, or rather, I'm getting the likelihood of the next day being about 57.5% likely to be an up day. And you can see that as the number of consecutive down days increases, the chance of the next day or the following day uh, being a positive day increases as well. So it's 
essentially backs up the, the idea that this is a mean reversion strategy and as you move further and further down uh, it's, it seems to be more likely to correct. Uh, however, there is a little caveat here, which is that the sample size decreases significantly as you wait for more consecutive down days. So this here shows how many days I actually would have would have within the market. Now remember what I tested previously when I just looked at one down day, uh, time in market was about 45%, which is coming out correct uh, and matching up with this chart. But as the number of consecutive down days that you have to wait for increases, the trading opportunities decrease quite significantly. So even if you wait for three down days in a row, you're gonna be in the market for about 10% of the time. Anything in ahead of that, it's really starting to approach very low percentages. So the sample size is smaller as a result. Um, and it also means that even though the likelihood may be higher that it's an up day, you're not really gonna be getting many trades uh, that's really worth pursuing and really worth trading with. So this is the reason why I decided to just stick with a single down day and to test that and see how that performs. So if you found this useful, uh, then uh, leave any comments or questions that you have in the sections below. Thanks for watching.